niggas know I go by problem, right? What? Paper plane and solo, that's a private flight. What? Yeah, I pedaled in the All right, what's up, guys? I thought I'd do a little tutorial. Someone asked in the other SketchUp video I did about um, making a box using what, what program do I use? How do I figure out how long my port needs to be? How long do I figure out my box size? Certain things like that. So this is what I'm going to kind of um, show you all today for those who don't know. I mean, a lot of my subscribers probably know about the Torres box tuning calculator. Um, some might not. Some of the people coming across some of my videos. So thought I'd do a little quick um, quick look at um, how to use it. I mean, um, as a free program, I think this is about the best you're going to find. There are better programs like Basebox Pro 6, I think, is out right now. There's some other Term Pro software, um, but those can all be upwards of $100 to $300, and not everybody wants to do that. Some people, I mean, for the cost of wood, you can build two boxes and hopefully find something, or if you have the money for the program, that's great. But this is a free program, um, downloadable through stevemedesigns.com. Um, the easiest way to find it, let's go to Google, um, type in Torres Box Calculator. I mean, it's one of the, it's a highly searched thing. And right here, you'll see updated 818, Steve Me Designs, um, stevemedesigns.com. You're going to click that, and of course, you're at the same page as I was showing here. Um, when you scroll down, this is the newer interface. Um, you can kind of change your units and whatnot depending on where you are but for the sake of this video um, what I'm showing will uh, will work so you're gonna come down to here and it says here's the download link to the program click link I'm gonna pop that open in another tab um, for Mac users there's some uh, there's some other steps I'm not, I haven't read them so I don't have a Mac but it kind of explains some of the stuff right here um, port walls I'll actually show that here in a second I'm gonna keep that there this is what you'll come to you will just click download and it'll basically pop up on your desktop like an icon down here um, it's a little kind of waveform with a black background so let's pop it open um, in a sketch of video I did a model for a 15 inch box for around four cubic feet around 35 Hertz tuning um, it's a pretty standard box so I'm gonna do one similar to that um, just to kind of show you all how you're going to arrive at certain numbers because you're not just going to plug stuff in and be like, boom, all right, that's what I'm building. It's, it's a little more kind of thought provoked than that. Um, it's not, it's not hard at all. It's just, you kind of have to think, all right, can I move this around? Can I do that? So instead of, um, talking to you about it for an hour, um, let's get into it. So Sarah Max dimensions is 20 by 38. By 16 that's what you have in your cargo space you want to fire your subs backwards fire your port backwards kind of keep some cargo room and keep it under the back seat so um, it's not sticking up above the window line or anything like that obstructing any view or anything and you can still fit some stuff back there so as you can see it already pulls up our gross volume which is overall space taken up that's the maximum size of your box is taking up and then your net volume is what your subwoofer actually sees, per se, um, what it's actually, what amount of volume it's um, reacting in. So that's that. Um, your wood thickness down here, this is if you say you're using half inch wood for a little eight or um, quarter inch wood or three quarter inch wood, which is kind of the general standard um, MDF or, uh, or birch. If you use Birch, you probably want to find 13 ply Baltic. It's extremely expensive, but it's basically the best Baltic you can get. It doesn't have any voids, but um, you can do your one inch, do two layers of three quarter, two layers of one, three layers of one, and so on. And you can see how the net volume plummets along with the um, the gross volume. But I think the gross volume was the total. Maybe I don't know. It's whatever. Net volume is the important one, so that's what we've got to work with. So I want the port height to match the box height since everything's facing backwards. So I'm going to take one and a half inches off because we've got our top face and our bottom face, which will subtract from the usable port. 
So 18.5. Now our width is what we're going to play around with. Generally 15s like anywhere from 40 to I think about 70 square inches of port. Some like a lot, some like a little, some like kind of in the middle. Um, and that's mainly a cone area factor of what they like. Um, a general rule of thumb plainly across the board is 12 to 16 square inches of port per cubic foot. And that's where this port area range down here factors in. That's your 12 to 16. So let's just pop in. Let's pop into three. All right, so we got 55.5 square inches. It's a, good, it's a good amount for a 15. Our port area per foot's really low. Um, and our net volume is still, I mean, the same thing. We've got our 65.56 hertz tuning and that's basically because you have no port length um, before I get into that real quick your woofer displacement um, I kinda forgot about this but you're gonna wanna do this um, generally for a 15 it's anywhere from about 0.15 on the smaller 15s to about 2.5 on the kinda monster size 15s so I'm gonna do a kind of a happy medium 0.2 just I mean if your point if your box is 0.1 off or 0.2 off it's not that big of a deal you're half a cube off then you kind of got to start worrying about stuff but um port walls um this kind of factors into our port thing here when you have zero port walls you actually enter this number in here you enter zero um one two or three and zero port walls you can see the actual port doesn't touch the top face far left face bottom face or far right face meaning it touches zero walls your one common wall, you can see it touches the very bottom face and none of the others. Two common walls, you can see it touches the top face and the bottom face, not the left face or the right face, so it only touches two faces. The three common walls, which is what we're doing in our design, you can see it touches the top face, the far left face, and the bottom face. So that was the whole, whole um, port wall thing. So we're going to do three. So now you can see our net volume's changed a little bit um, to 5.19. Um, basically, say if you do zero, um, I mean, it, it kind of depends on how many port walls you're using. It'll move around your net volume because you're actually using more or less wood on the inside of the box to form your port. So let's start messing with length here. Um, let's just start with 20. Okay, you can see we've got a decent tuning, um, 34.6 hertz, 12.28. Um, it's a little low on the port side, but it's still a fine, usable amount. Um, net volume, 4.52. I think that's a little high for my taste, so I kind of want to drop that. So let's um, let's take our depth, or let's let's take our width. Let's drop our width to 36. Still decent. Let's drop it a little more. Okay, so now we're at four cubes. Um, our portier per foot went up a little bit, um, which it's still in the 12 to 16, which is good. Our tuning frequency is 36.5, which is pretty good. Um, for just a regular daily, all-around type of music, 33 to about 36 is generally good. Um, but of course, depending on the sub, the box, um, your cabin, whether your windows are up or down, um, all sorts of things will change. You can tune to 40 hertz and play into the 20s with ease. Or you can tune in the 30s and not be able to play below 28. So it's kind of one of those things that's it's kind of... Things will look good on paper or on computer like we're using now. But you kind of need that real-world experience of testing boxes to understand what your box is going to do. Um, the Basebox Pro, the Term Pro software, stuff like that, the expensive stuff, will actually give you a pretty accurate response curve of the actual box using the deal small parameters of the actual subwoofer. Um, so that'll help in that amount. But um, with this with this program, because it's kind of limited information, you kind of need to have that general um, idea of, okay, I know this likes this, I know this sub likes this kind of box, um, certain things like that. So we're pretty much good across the board. Maybe you want to lower the tu tuning frequency so you'd either lengthen the port or make the port smaller. Um, I kind of want to keep that net, vol net volume at 4, so I'm actually going to increase my width to 4.25 and then actually 
add some port links. So I'll actually drop my net volume back down even though I made the width higher, but it'll also bring my tuning down. So that's pretty much the program. Um, if you wanted to use um, aeroports, aeroports generally use some um, less. You can use your quick crete tubes. My preference, if you were to use um, anything, would be PSP um, incorporated aeroports. They sell them on Parts Express. They're flared. Um, you can go way low on port area per foot and still not get um, port turbulence. So, say we did that. See, we, we had this big box and we got down to four cubes. Now, let's say we want to use um, one. I've had success with one six inch flared port from PSP. Um, their flares actually go out to nine inches and then flare down to six. So, it's actually, it really helps with turbulence. So say, all right, we got our port in here, um, but our box is our box is really big. So we need to say um, drop the width to thirty. Now you can see, even though our port area is a little small, we've got our four cubes tuned low to thirty hertz, and our box is eight inches smaller in width. Now we can say, okay, let's drop our um, let's drop our height to sixteen. Um, and you can see now we've got three cubes, so let's actually bump that back up, try and get closer to our, our four cubes, and now I'm actually going to make this, let's trim that down to 14, we're almost at four cubes, tuning's going up, we're almost at four, it's at 35, let's go to 10, okay, it's a little, let's make this 31, See, now you can see you're at your close to 4 um, cubic foot. You're at your tuning frequency at close to 35, that 36 um, kind of daily mark. Um, with the port being small like it is, and with the flare, even though you're tuned in this kind of higher 30s range, you'll actually be able to play really low. Um, port area per, area per foot on these um, flared arrows is actually okay in a daily kind of environment. Um, due to the massive flare on the ones I'm talking about. If you're doing a quick crete tube, you're going to want to have two and two six inch diameter ones and try and figure out a box that will allot for your four cubic footer. You can run, I think, three fours. Three fours will, I think, actually work out pretty well um, if you're using some PVC or quick crete tube. But um, like I said, the flares, the flares are awesome. So that's pretty much the box tuning calculator. Um, hopefully this video didn't run too long. I mean, it's it's kind of a lot to talk about. It's tedious. It's you know, it's it's kind of a bunch of a uh, bunch of little things. But for those who actually watched this, who actually needed to kind of understand what's going on, um, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys.